Welcome to Catch a Fire London. We are a family who loves to encounter God's transforming presence. We are super excited to have you join us today. And we're really excited at the thought of reaching London in ways we've never been able to reach London before. And I want to bless you today. I want to bless you and encourage you to stay connected as a family. There's lots of things going on. There's so many things on Facebook. There's lots of things happening with teaching during the week. So please be connected. If you're in our church family, you can have a look on Church Suite and find out what else is going on. And let's love each other really well in this season. But I want to say welcome to Family Online. And if you're a visitor, you're also welcome. Please do check out the Facebook feed and our website for so many details of what's happening as Catch the Fire in London in this season. Have a great service. large crowd gathered and laid palm branches in their in their cloaks across the road giving Jesus a royal treatment the hundreds of people shouted Hosanna to the son of David blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna is the name is the highest name the these Bible terses tells us that some son in both prophecy and the actual event we encourage and inspire to live Jesus, the King of your life. <laughs> well, isn't it so? So today is some Sunday, and we want to celebrate the how Jesus entered and the day that every. The, it was. It's just a, a. It's a. It's a reminding how how we lift God. And we lift Jesus this morning. So why don't we, if you could stand, stand, but if you could close your eyes, we're just going to pray before we start the service. Oh. So with all hands, why don't you put your hands on your heart right now and say, we give you praise and honor for your ways are righteous and true. We give you worship for you are holy and just. We declare that your love stands firm forever for your loving kindness endures forever. Thank you that your ways are greater than our ways. Your thoughts are deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you have a plan to, you, you have a plan to redeem. Thank you that you, you make all things new. Thank you that your face is towards the righteous and, you're, and you hear our prayers and know our heart. Help us to stay strong and true to you. Help us not to fo follow after the voices of the crowd, but to press in close to you, to hear your whispers, and to seek you after you alone. So we praise you this morning, and we bless you, Lord, for you are good. You are good. And why don't we say Hosanna this morning? Hosanna! Hosanna to the King who is worthy to be praised. And we welcome you. And we and we we celebrate today, and we have Samuel with us leading us into worship. And I know you'll love, and I know that we're going to love as we enter His presence. Come with a thankful heart. Come with a heart that gives praises to Him, knowing that He alone is worthy. So we say, Hosanna to you, Hosanna. We set our gaze on you, Lord. We set our gaze on you this morning. We set our gaze on you, Lord. We set our gaze on you this morning. We set our gaze on you. We set our gaze on you this morning. We set our gaze on you. We set our gaze on you this morning. We pour our love on you. 
pour our love on you this morning. We pour our love on you. We pour our love on you this morning. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. Yeah, we welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. Yeah, just welcome him in this morning. Just welcome him in, into your living room, into your home. And praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures, He below. Praise Him above the heavenly. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Sing praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures, keep alone. Praise Him above the heavenly host. And praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And all. This morning, Amen. Singing, Amen. Singing, Amen. Singing out to you, Lord. Darkness with a burning light on me. 
who's standing on who is standing on the mountains who is on the earth below who is bigger who is bigger than the heavens and the lover of my soul Creator God, Creator God, He is Yahweh, great I am, He is Yahweh, the Lord of all, He is Yahweh. Rosa Sharon, He is Yahweh, the righteous Son, He is Yahweh, free and one, He is Yahweh. Let's sing, He was moving. Who is moving on the waters? Who is holding up the moon? Who is peeing by the darkness? With the burning light, who is standing on? Who is standing on the mountain? on the earth alone Who is bigger than the heavens And the lover of my soul Creator God Creator God He is Yahweh the Great I Am He is Yahweh The Lord of all He is Yahweh Rose of Sharon Rose of Sharon, he is Yahweh, righteous son, he is Yahweh, three in one, he is Yahweh, creator God, creator God, he is Yahweh, great I am, he is Yahweh, the Lord of all, he is Yahweh. Rose of Sharon, he is Yahweh. Righteous Son, He is Yahweh. Free and one, He is Yahweh. And Yahweh, Yahweh, You are Yahweh. Yahweh, You are Lord Yahweh. In Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, 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 you are Yahweh, 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 and Yahweh, and Yahweh, Yahweh. Who is he that makes me happy? Who is he that gives me peace? Just pouring out peace this morning. Who is he that brings me comfort? It turns the bitter into sweet. Who is stirring up? Who is stirring up my passion? Who is rising up for me? Who is feeling up my hunger? Yeah, with everything I need, Creator God, Creator God, He's Yahweh, Great I Am, He is Yahweh, Lord of all, He is Yahweh. Rose of Sharon, he is Yahweh, righteous son, he is Yahweh, the and one, he is Yahweh, and Yahweh, 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 you are Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, 
Tell him who he is today. You are healer. You are savior. You're provider. You're the Lord of Lords and the Prince of Peace. You're the God of hope. The restored of one. You're the merciful King. You're the good, good Father. The Holy One, the Holy One. Because you are Yahweh. Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Glory, all of your presence, I'll find rest for my soul. Sing the depths of your love. I'll find peace makes me whole in the glory. It's in the glory of your presence. I'll find rest for my soul. Death of your love, I'll find peace makes me whole. Cause I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I love your presence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Love to be with you, Lord. In the glory. In the glory of your presence, I'll find rest my soul. In the depths of the I'll find peace makes me whole. Cause I love, I love, I love your presence. Cause I love, I love. 
I love your presence. Say love, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I love your presence. If you want it, come and get it, pouring it out. Love the key has given you, it's never in doubt. Go of your heart, go of your head, feel you now. Feeling this morning, go of your heart, go of your head, feel him now. To go of your heart, go of your head, feel him now. Go of your heart, go of your head. Feel him, feel him, feel him now. Feel him now. He wants to meet with you. He wants to encounter you. He wants to lift off your feet and pour in his love. Feel him now. Oh, I love you. I love your presence. I love you. I love your presence. Just wanna say. I love, I love, I love your presence, yeah, I love, I love, I love your presence. I love your presence, Lord. I love your presence, Lord. It's all I need is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. All I need is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you, Lord. Is all I need is you. All I need. All I need is you coming back to the heart of worship. All I need is you, cause all I need is you. All I need is you. Cause all I need all I need is you. All I need.
universe we hold everyone on earth we hold the universe we hold everyone on earth we hold This morning, God, we just re-surrender our lives to you. God, we make you Lord of all again. We make you Lord of our lives, God. We make you Lord of our relationships, over our finances, God, of every part of our world, Jesus. We make you Lord. We make you Lord over our time. God, over our reactions, over our emotions, Father. God, I just ask that you would just pour in your peace. God, I ask that you would pour in your love. I ask that you would pour in your hope. God, to each and every single one of us this morning. Lord, would you come, Jesus? Would you come? Would you come? Fill us up. Lord. So to sing, what I need is you one last time. All I need is you. All I need is you. All I need is you. All I Okay, well, thank you, Sam. That was awesome. Thank you so much for leading us in worship. And yeah, I want you just wherever you are right now, I want you just put a hand on your heart or on your head and just just make that a declaration of yourself. All I need is you, God. God, all I need is you. Um, I don't need 24-7 Tesco's. I don't need uh, the shops open. I don't need uh, to be out doing whatever it is I want. I just need you, God. Um, Lord, I know that's all that I need is you and your presence. And so, God, we invite you in. We, we re-invite you in into this moment and we say, you're welcome here, God. You're so welcome here. And yeah, uh, why don't you just welcome God right now into your atmosphere and just into your home. You may have already done it this morning, but why not just welcome him into this moment right now? And uh yeah, welcome to church, everyone. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Um, it's so good to have you with us. Um, I want to just give a, a shout out again. I feel like every week we do this, but every week it's so deserving. 
to our uh, our ministry team and our media team who uh, just each week, just a little tweak here and there just makes such a difference. Um, and just the yeah, guys, you just are smashing it. So thank you so much. I am especially thrilled to be here today uh, because all of this week I've been battling a sore throat that, that was like, uh, I, it was like I was sort of swallowing a cheese grater every time I swallowed. And God bless our team, they were praying for me and, and you know, uh, I was just sort of spent a few days in bed just trying to get over it. Um, but I am back, uh, thank the Lord, and I'm feeling better. And I've got my, I've had my little antiseptic throat spray just before coming on. Um, and this will probably be all the talking that I do for the rest of the day. But um, I'm just thankful to God for just coming through and for healing and for bringing his, his, uh, his touch to my life. And do you know what? All of this week we've had messages, and I'm sure you've had it as well on your WhatsApps and, and text messages, people saying, please pray for blank. Please pray for this person and for that person. Um, because they need um, <laughs> they need a touch of God. And as the week has gone on, the prayer requests have been coming out, but also the answers to the prayer, the, the temperature has come down, the ache has gone, um, uh, the, the, the test came back negative. And I just want to just give glory to God for all of the different ways in which he has answered prayers. And there's too many to even say on this stream right now, but, but let's be people who remember to give glory to God when an answer to come, comes through. Uh, we all, we all love throwing out the prayer request, but let's make sure we give glory to God for every time he answers. And I just give you glory, God, for just making me feel better this week. This is the best I've sounded and the best I've looked this week. Um, so praise God. Um, I just wanted to read this. This I, I was looking through my my Bible this morning, and I came across this verse. You know, when you found something, you find something that you circled a little while ago, uh, and you wrote a little note next to, and you completely forgot that you did it. And it was this verse from Hebrews six, and it said, um, uh, "We who have fled for refuge might have the strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul." a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf. What I wrote next to, to that verse was, he is an anchor, not a helicopter. And I was like, what, what did I mean by that? And this is what I wrote. I don't know when I wrote this. He doesn't pick us up out of our circumstances. He fixes us even as the storm rages around us. We stay fixed. Matthew 14, Jesus, Jesus walked on the waves, not on still water. Then Peter does it. What's the miracle? That he keeps us secure in the storm. And I, I, just, I just love that I found that one today, that he anchors us. He doesn't just deliver us out and take us out of us. He anchors us and keeps us secure. So I just bless you right now, whatever this week has been for you, just know that you're anchored in the presence of God. You're anchored in him and you're safe and secure. Whatever's going on. That's who he is. He is the firm rock and he is secure. So amen to that. Well, just before we're going to hand over to Tom in a second, and we're going to do the offering in a moment, just to give you a little update of what's been happening this last week with the family. Uh, we've had our communion times and our family live times. This week it's been so great because we've been letting communion by a bunch of different people. We've had Matt and Kay, uh, Dan and Hannah have led us. Paul Manwaring, um, Ellie's led, led us, Tom has. So those times have been really deep and, and just beautiful. And you can go back onto our Facebook feed and actually rewatch those ones. So if you've missed one, you can just go back and find those communion ones. Don't get them confused with the 6 p.m. family live times because they've been slightly different. Um, so we've had the history of CTF London, which was cool. Uh, we've had an interview with Flicky, uh, our communal grandmother of the whole Catch Time movement. Um, we've had Guess That Baby from Alida. Uh, we've had um, uh, an interview with Ellie, one of the doctors and one of the leaders on our team. Um, and who could forget Guess That Worship Tune on the kazoo led by Tan Davison. Um, please, please, when you're going back over the, the communion videos, if you're going to watch one, please make sure you don't click on the one with Dan uh, in case you're looking for a sort of third heaven level encounter with the bread and the wine and you've got Dan playing Blessed Be the Name of the Lord on Kazoo. Um, that would not work out well for you in that moment. Anyway, um, 
we've had worship on this week. We've had the Thursday evening worship night. Um, and one thing I didn't even really know was happening was that the worship department have been doing watch parties for worship sort of two or three times during the week. And it feels like every night there's been one of them on. So please check those out and just, just have a scroll. Thursday nights will be worship night, uh, but it seems like it's happening a lot more. So praise God. That's awesome. Um, I want to just go on uh, one more person I just want to give a shout out to, or people, is our pastoral team, um, because I've been uh, off this week. I've not really been able to do anything. And I just, I just, Sarah Morden and Kate Seithel and your team underneath you, um, Ian and Maggie, David and Sandy, Scott and Fiona, uh, Michael and Rita, so many, so many more people. Forgive me if I, if I haven't just name checked you there. So many people just loving our family. Um, phone calls, text messages, just there just seemed to be this constant stream of, of, are you okay? How are you doing? Let's connect. Let's do a Zoom. And I, it's just blessed my heart so much to just see this going on all week. So massive shout out to you, Ignite Group Leaders. Massive shout out to you for encouraging your groups, for meeting. Uh, Rhymes and Serena sent a beautiful voice note about their, their, their group the other night that had just had this uh, incredible night of encounter over Zoom. And it just goes to show you, we, the presence of God just lands when you call on him. When you ask for him to come, you can be over a video screen and the presence of God can still come. So hallelujah. Right, I'm going to dive in super quick to the offering and then I'm uh, going to hand over to Tom. So I don't have a real long offering talk. Um, <laughs> the, the thing that God said to me when I woke up um, this morning and he was, he was speaking to me a little bit about it last night was, was uh, Luke 9 and the, the, the feeding of the 5,000. And it was a real simple question. What are your loaves and fishes? Right now, in this season, in what's going on, what are your loaves and fishes? What is it that you have that represents loaves and the fishes? Give that, bring that, it's that simple. This is, this is the most, in a nutshell, uh, offering talk that I think I've probably ever done. Whatever your loaves and the fishes are, Bring that. Let the Lord multiply. Let the Lord do with your loaves and fishes what he does with simple, small offerings given from the heart. We're going to be having the, the links for giving on church suite and donate buttons and all of that. And that should be coming up on your live feed right now. Um, if you've got the church suite app, you can give through that. But I just want to encourage you. Why not just give what the Lord has given and trust that he can do something supernatural with your gift? I love the, uh, some of you will know that I've been banging on about this TV series, The Chosen. And if you haven't watched it, I'm just going to keep bugging you until you have, because it's one of the most beautiful representations of Jesus on film that I've ever seen. And in The Chosen, um, right at the beginning, when they were coming up with the idea and they're like, how do we finance this thing without Hollywood kind of telling us to kind of make it look a certain way and take away the Christian message and blah, blah, blah. And they said, well, we're going to have to do it outside of Hollywood, which means we're going to have to do crowdfunding. And the director and the, the, the guy who was in charge of it, um, the creator said, like, felt the Lord say, I need to bring my loaves and two fishes. And he said, well, Lord, I'll bring what I've got. It's over to you. I don't know what we can do. I don't know how we're going to raise this money. Cut a long story short, The Chosen became the largest ever crowdfunded um, project ever in history. And they got something like 10 million pounds in a couple of months and they started making it. But it all came from that. I'm going to bring what my loaves and two fishes are. This is what I have for God. God, would you multiply it? And so I just want to encourage you right now, whatever's happening with, with, with your job, um, with, with income and all the rest of it, we serve a God who is our provider. He is the one who has seen to the need. And so whatever it is that you're able to give of your time, of your finances into the kingdom of God, do so knowing that he can multiply it. And I just bless everybody right now on this feed, every single bank account, every single um resource that that is represented by the people on this screen i bless your finances i bless your resource pots and your your pockets and I'm, father i ask in your name right now that you would bless the loaves and fishes that every single person is giving um whether it's tithes and offerings whether it's giving their time whether it's sacrificing uh, their minutes to call somebody uh, to love somebody in the name of jesus i bless it right now in the name of jesus and if you're not a regular member of Catch Fire London, you can go onto our website um, and find the giving page there. If you're in Church Street, you can just pop open your Church Street app and give that way. And so I just bless you and I thank you as well because we have so many testimonies, even of this week, of 
finances from the church going to people who are struggling right now and making such a difference in their life, whether that's the pound against poverty, whether that's actually the church saying, hey, we can pay somebody to paint the office while we're out and you know, bless the staff and bless the person who's doing the painting. Whatever it is, we're trying to find creative ways in which we can, we can support and put resources into this church family. And it all comes from the offerings and the tithes that you give. So I just wanna thank you so much for that. And last, but by no means least, I'm going to hand over to my dear friend, Thomas David Allsop. And so why don't you just, you can stretch your hands. It's gonna be towards me right now because I'm on the screen, but Jesus will be supernaturally transferring that to Tom. Father, we bless Tom, we bless the man of the word that Tom is. I thank you, Father, for the prepared life that he lives and for the prepared message that he has brought for us today. And Lord, I pray that as he teaches, he would encounter your Holy Spirit. He would be speaking the very words of God. And Lord, we, we ask that you bless the Allsop family, bless Abby, bless Grace and Jess, bless his parents and everyone connected with the Allsop family. And Lord, would we be blessed as we are taught and encountering your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Over to you, Tom. Hello, 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 church family. Thank you, Alistair. That was great. I loved uh, loved what you shared. I I, I got busted by Ellie because uh, we're um, we're on a on a separate system, so we're about 10, 15 seconds ahead of where the live stream's at. Uh, and I was in the other room getting a drink and was just tuning into the live stream, but I could hear Alistair talking in the other room. So when he said, "God is an anchor, not a helicopter," I wrote on the on the feed, "Wow, love that! Such great revelation." And Ellie was like, "You realised you." message that you know about 10 seconds before he actually said that and I was just like well maybe I'm maybe I'm just super prophetic maybe I'm outside of time maybe I'm just tuned in to the God of time and eternity but either way it was a great revelation um but yeah I loved what you shared Alistair thank you and thank you Samuel such uh, wonderful worship and it's just so good to be together so welcome um I'm going to share uh, from Hebrews 10 this morning so if you've got your Bibles I encourage you just to uh, grab them and, and turn to Hebrews 10 uh, and we're going to open the word of God. So I'm just going to pray again, not because Alistair didn't do a great job, but just because I feel like I need to pray again. So <laughs> we've had the, the madness of the morning trying to get the girls together and they had their five kids Zoom and that was all great. And uh, sometimes when the preacher prays at the start, uh, he's not really praying for you, he's praying for himself. So Father, <laughs> thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity to gather. And even as we open the word now, Holy Spirit, would you breathe on it? Would you make it uh, become alive and become active? Uh, we thank you that we're washed by the word, even as we spend time meditating, as we spend time uh, chewing on your word, that we are fed, Father, that, 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 that your word is life and breath to us and it is food. Uh, and we choose to nourish ourselves today on your word. And, and we ask Holy Spirit for every single person listening that as we open the word this morning, that they would be radically transformed right where they are in their front rooms as they're watching on their phones, on their tablets, on their computers, on their TVs, whatever the uh, method of transmission, God, we thank you that you are living and active, you are real and you are here with us, that we are gathered in your name, God, so we thank you. And that leads me wonderfully uh, to my title today, Why We Gather. I just want to spend some time just looking into this concept of why we gather, and we're going to read through this verse from uh, these few verses from Hebrews 10, uh, and then we're just going to pull this apart, and uh, there's a couple of application points in this, and uh, you guys will be pleased to know, those of you who are watching this live, uh, there's part of this uh, where the challenge, you've already done it, you've already completed the homework, uh, you've already succeeded, because part of the challenge is going to be that we need to continue to uh, gather, we need to continue to gather, and that's what you guys are doing here. And so, yeah, primarily, uh, you have completed point one, so that's good. So let's read this uh, passage of scripture together, and then we will, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get into the meat of it. So let me read this. Hebrews 10, this is a call to persevere in faith. Reading from verse 19. So this is Hebrews 10, verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. 
and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And just before I get into the main uh, meat of what I want to look at, I just wanted to make a point here uh, on verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And I just felt to say this, that, you know, so many of us are engaging uh, with the promises of God in our lives and, you know, uh, trying to discern his plan for us, trying to discern the destiny that he has for us. And uh, so often we can fall into the trap of allowing our faith to be in the promise, not in the promise speaker, the promise maker. And we need to understand that the strength of a promise is not in the word spoken. It's in the one who speaks them. What do I mean by that? I mean, sometimes we can get a prophetic word and our faith is, is, is shifted from the giver of the word. And by that, I don't mean the prophet. I mean, the originator of the word, the one who spoke the word to the prophet um, is it, we, we can shift our faith onto the word and not onto the word giver, the word himself, the big, the big capital W word, as in John 1. And, and I, I felt to just pause on that for a second. I felt that was for someone this morning that you need to realign your faith off of the promise and onto the promise maker. The strength of the promise is not in the word spoken, but in the speaker himself. It is God who is faithful and it's God who we put our trust in, not in the promise. Uh, I could I could promise Dan Graham that once the football starts back, he's going to be on the starting 11 for, for the England team. OK, lovely promise. He may want to hold fast to that truth. But I don't have any authority to make that promise. And so he could put his faith in the promise, but actually... He would have no faith in the promise maker because I don't have the ability to make good on that promise. But he who has promised is faithful, not just he acts faithful. He is indeed himself faithfulness. And so I just felt to pause on that as I was preparing uh, yesterday for this message. I just felt uh, as I was reading back through my notes that there was something there for someone today that you need to re-anchor your hope, not to the promise made, but to the promise maker. So let's get into this. So this is why we gather and point number one and this is uh what i want you to take home as your first kind of point you were designed to be connected into a family of faith god has purposed you and planned you and prepared you to be connected in to a family of faith and god has called you to himself absolutely the the primary call uh, uh, of the upward call of uh, of, of God in Christ is 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 to relationship. You have been called to himself. But what you need to understand is that in God calling you to, to himself, he has called you to others. By definition, him calling you to himself has uh, a secondary effect, which is he is calling you to others. I preached a couple of months ago, and uh, you can refer back to our YouTube channel for all of our previous messages but i preached a message on the holy catholic church the communion of saints we were going through a whole series on the creed and um we we were we were looking at this idea and i was saying you know the the, the first commandment you know love the lord your god with all your heart your mind your soul your strength but the second's just like it love others love your neighbor as you love yourself and i was saying actually the evidence that you are loving god with all of your heart your mind your soul and your strength is that you love your neighbor as yourself. If you do not love your neighbor, that's evidence that you haven't really understood what it means to love God. And, and you need to fall in love with God. But one of the beautiful side effects, one of the glorious outcomes, and uh, one of the things falling in love with God causes is for you to fall more in love with your neighbor. And so God has called you to himself, absolutely. But you were designed to be connected to a family of faith. That's part of your purpose and that's part of your original design. It's not good for man to be alone. God made us in the image of a family, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, eternal relationship, eternal deference to uh, each other in the Trinity. And it's that image that we're made in. Let man, let us make man in our image. And so this idea, and, and we need to understand that in the call of God on our lives, you will not reach your fullest and highest potential in life by going it alone you absolutely won't you you may achieve things but you won't achieve your full potential i, I think about we have um a lovely area near our house called the aquadrome which is this big kind of area full of lakes and fields and paddocks it's beautiful and there's all these geese that live there and um pretty much every morning um if i've got the window open uh, i'll hear my, my alarm clock if i haven't been 
woken up by one of my children putting their finger as far as it will physically go up my nose, which is uh, a wonderful way uh, to be woken up. That's truly glorious. Um, the, 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 the way I get woken up on other occasions is with a ha, 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 ha. And it's the bees flying over my house and they fly in that amazing V formation. And here's the thing, they can fly by themselves, but they understand and they have learned that by flying in that formation with one another, it requires much less effort and they can get further if they go together. You've heard that uh, saying, if you, want to, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go with others. Uh, I think the science, and this is um, a, a statistic, uh, you know, 27.6% uh, of statistics are made up on the spot. But the, uh, the statistic I heard is that it's about 40% uh, less effort for them when they are flying in one of those Vs. And they, they swap, they, um, they, they alternate. And, and the one at the front is making the headway. And isn't that just like our life? Uh, you know, we're, we're called to some seasons where... We're, we're, we're pushing hard and we're creating the momentum. Other seasons, we're allowing that momentum that others have created to carry us through. You, they could do it by themselves, but they will go farther uh, when they go together. And we need to understand that. You might think, I can do this by myself. I'm strong enough. Well, you may be strong enough for what you have in mind, but you are definitely not strong enough in and of yourself for what God has in mind. And that's another challenge for us for being connected with a family of faith is you may be able to go it alone based on your expectations of where you should be and your idea of what hitting the pinnacle is, but guarantee that you, um, you cannot reach the potential that God has for you in your life, in your faith, in your walk, in your ministry, in uh, whatever success looks like for your life and for, for, for what God has planned and purpose for you. You absolutely can't do that alone. God has ordained and designed us uh, to be interdependent to one another and dependent on him. You know, here's the point. If you can do it without God, it's probably not of God. There's a good sobering thought for us. Anything you can do without God probably wasn't his plan in the first place. Number two, there are some things that only happen corporately, not individually. It's true that it's good to worship on your own. It's absolutely true that it's good to pray by yourself, to build up your own personal relationship with God. All of those things are good and true. I'm not endorsing that you don't have a personal relationship with God, but it's also true that there are some things that only happen corporately, not individually. One of my favorite passages, I, I seem somehow to be able to crow this, crowbar this message into every sermon I preach, but Psalm 133, it's one of my favorite sections of scripture, but there's a blessing that the Lord commands life for there the Lord bestows a blessing. Where does he bestow a blessing? Where brothers dwell together in unity. Now, I'm not talking about the unity part here. I'm talking about the dwell part here. There are only three words in the English language that start with DW. That's a shout out to Alistair. That's a reference to his favorite show, West Wing. One of them is dwell. And that word dwell in the original, uh, it has connotations of colonization. The idea behind that is when you dwell, you are being intentional. You, there's an intentionality about it. It's saying um, the idea of colonization, when you colonize, you, you lay down infrastructure. You are intentional about creating the infrastructure you need to sustain life where you're planning to colonize. You think about people going and colonizing uh, new, uh, as, as yet undiscovered lands all those hundreds of years ago. And when you colonize, you start to build infrastructure that is to support your intention to stay there. And that's that word in, in the Psalm 133 where you colonize in unity. But you can't colonize in unity if you're on your own. You've got to be with others. Uh, and that's, that's the, the challenge. Uh, Matthew 18 uh, verses 19 and 20. You know, if, if two of you agree, um, it will be done. That word agree is symphoneo. It's where we get our word symphony. It's this idea of coming together in agreement. And think about symphony. You can have two or three violins uh, all playing different things. You know, unity isn't conformity. Um, but actually this idea of coming together, it doesn't mean we're all doing the same thing, but it means we have the same goals and the same aims and the same intentions. That's what true biblical unity looks like. And then in verse 20, where two or three gather in my name, there's something that can only happen corporately that is not available to you individually. Now, granted, we do need those individual times. That's not what I'm saying. 
And what I'm saying is, in addition to those individual times where we pursue the Lord individually on our own, we create our own personal history with God. In addition, we need to have those times where we gather corporately. There's something powerful about the corporate gathering. Now, uh, think about in Psalm 34, where David said, let us magnify the Lord together. There's something about this togetherness. There are some things that only happen corporately, not individually. And there are some callings of God on your life that can only be fulfilled in the presence of God's people. There will be times when the only way you can serve the Lord is to go to the Lord's house. That that's a that there will be calls of God on your life. There will be prophetic words that have been spoken um, and callings that the Lord has given you that will require you to come together. If you are determined to go it alone, if you say, I don't need to gather, I don't need to go to church, I don't need to be in the assembly of the brethren or however you might phrase it. I don't think anyone would phrase it like that, but you know what I mean? you even just for you to be obedient to the lord you have to gather there's even just something about simple obedience even as we're reading in this verse don't forsake the gathering together as some are in the habit of doing and remember that when we say church we don't mean a gathering of buildings we don't mean uh going to a physical place uh church is in the home church is in your relationships church is in your family Churches in relational connection. And of course, in this season, digital connection. We are learning now more than ever. We are having a stark lesson. You know, experience is a cruel uh, schoolmaster because she gives the exam first and the lesson second. We're learning as the church, by and large, that church isn't the building. We, we don't have that luxury in this season to be able to gather together in one physical place. But here's the point. Church isn't the building. We know this. Church has never been about the building. Church is, is something much bigger than that. And and, and the irony is the, the meaning of, of that word ecclesia is the called out ones. And the irony is in this season, we haven't been called out. We've been called in to our homes, but we are having to foster and um, initiate new and fresh ways of connection. And, and now more than ever, we need to understand the importance of the fact that church isn't a building. Church is a, something you are. It's not something you go to. And so in this season, as we as we hunger for the, the things of the corporate, we have to find new ways to have corporate gatherings. And today would be one of those examples, us being able to gather together to meet, even though we're not physically in the same location. Number three, you need what the church gives and you give what the church needs. I, I preached this a few years back, giving uh, what the family needs and needing what the family gives. It's called a chiastic structure. It's you know true one way and it's true the other. Uh, and we need to understand that um, in this season, it would be very tempting and very easy to become entirely consumeristic in the way we engage with the body of Christ, in the way we engage with the, um, the concept of even what does church look like. You know how easy it is in this season? And I'm sure no one watching has done this at all. Um, I may potentially in the past have been guilty of this. And again, every time I preach, I have these lovely moments of, uh, public vulnerability where I, I then say to our church you know and everyone just looks blankly at me like I'm the only one that ever does this that's fine I have in the past been guilty of logging on to things like Facebook lives and just having them on in the background and doing other things you know I might be doing the washing up or tidying or even just you know resting or, or my mind's elsewhere and I've kind of got it on in the background and I'm kind of half listening and I'm, I'm not present in the moment and it would be very easy in this season to just click on and be doing other stuff in the background hopefully no one was doing that right now and got utterly convicted but bless you there's grace maybe don't write it in the comments because i you know we don't want everyone to judge you <laughs> you know the the challenge is for us to be engaged and, and sometimes you know our experience of social media up to this point thus far has been very much consumeristic it's a it's a consumer uh, operation social media you know the currency on social media is attention if they can keep your attention, that's where the advertising pays because you're, you're tuned in and you're connected. And that's the war now is for our attention. And more than ever, ever, like church, less so in the past, has, has, has been uh, potentially a victim of that because the likelihood is when you're in the room physically together, you know, your attention is there just by virtue of the fact that you've set that time aside and, and you've chosen to not do other things so that you can attend church. Guys, we've got to be careful in the season that we're not, uh, seeing this as a live stream, I, I, I challenged someone the other day, even with their language, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not available for the live stream. I'm like, that's fine. 
but have it in your mindset that what you're saying is I'm not coming to church today. I'm choosing to not come to church today. That's fine. Now I know I've just said church is not somewhere you go. It's something you are. I've chosen not to attend my church service today. And, and that's the challenge is in this season, it would be very easy to just become consumeristic. And so we have to be careful in this season that we don't allow our preferences to become our priorities. What do I mean by that? I mean, in a, in a world where you choose what you consume, it's very easy to allow our preferences to dictate what we, what we consume. I don't like the look of that, therefore I'm not going to do that. I do like the look of that, therefore I'm going to click on there. I'm going to click on this one and stay for the bit that I like, but for the bit that I don't enjoy as much, I'm then going to go and do something else. And I, I talked about this the other week, you know, the danger is that church can become like a pick and mix shop. And here's the point. Our corporate expressions together are meant to be varied. We're meant to have a, the full range of a, of a healthy spiritual diet and we need to vary our intake. Most kids, given the choice, would not choose their greens. But the point is parents know that that's essential for, for healthy living. And so a little bit of freedom can be a bad thing. And so guys, embrace, uh, here's my challenge. Allow God to dictate to you what your priorities are in this season. Don't allow your preferences to become your priorities. Uh, because what will happen is after a few weeks or potentially months, we don't know how long this is going to be going on, you will have um, failed to nourish yourself properly. There's a challenge for you. Ask God, what do my priorities look like in this season for how I'm engaging with the corporate body of Christ? But we need to understand that church, you need what the church gives and you give what the church needs. The nature of social media is consumer consumeristic, but the nature of social connection is contributory you've got consumerism and contribution and the model for church is not consumerism the model for church is contribution what is it i can bring what is it i can give and in the giving and the bringing god ordains it that our personal needs are met having needs is not a bad thing okay god has designed us with certain needs that can only be fulfilled by him but sometimes i believe he chooses to fulfill the needs by him through others you know christ in you the hope of glory but actually christ in my brother alistair is the hope of some of my glory as well there are things that alistair brings to my experience of church because of the calling on his life because of the image of god that he's made in isn't it funny that we're all made in the image of god yet we're all unique there are aspects of the image of god that alistair carries that dan carries that chloe carries that ellie carries that kate carries I need the body to represent the image of God that they're made in. I need what the family gives, but conversely, the family needs what I give. We need to understand that all of us have something to bring. And here's the challenge. What does that look like in this season? What does that look like where your usual methods and means of serving perhaps aren't available to you? Guys, you can't just sit back and wait for normal life to resume. We've got to innovate and we've got to um, come up with fresh and new ideas of how we can give and sow into the body. You know, uh, I remember this uh, wonderful picture that Danny Silk shared when he taught on this. And he was talking about this um, swimming pool, like an above ground swimming pool that they used to play in when they were kids. And he said what they used to do was um, they would all get in the pool and they'd all go up against the side of the walls and they'd all face the same way. And they'd start to walk around the edge of the pool all in the same direction. And at first it was like hard going. You know what it's like when you're trying to walk in water? And it's up to their, 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 their necks and they're walking. And at, and at first it's hard work. But what happens is they start to then swirl the water and they start to build this momentum. They start to build this current. And before long, actually the going's easier. And, you know, guys, it's sometimes hard to initiate momentum. It's a lot easier to maintain momentum than it is to initiate it. But here's the point. If you are faithful and diligent and you push through that initial tough stage you start to build something you start to to bring a circulation into the atmosphere and when he was telling the story here's what he said he said once they built that momentum they would then take it in turns for some of them to lift their legs off the bottom and to float and allow the current to take them round and here was the point there are if everybody did that at the same time if everyone just let their feet up you would lose that momentum. But if one by one they took it in turn, so some were continuing that momentum that they gained and others were lifting their legs and allowing the current to take them, there were, there were seasons that um, the people lifting their legs were allowing the current to take them. And the uh, lesson he gave from that was, there are seasons in all of our lives 
where we don't have the strength to push. And that's where we need the momentum that the body of Christ is continuing to build and maintain in our lives to allow the current to carry us. But, you know, you get through that season, that dark night of the soul, that tough time. And before long, you're back on your feet again and you're able to contribute again. And so there are times where you need the current that the body of Christ is building and maintaining to to allow you to be carried through this season. There are other times where you'll be strong and your feet are on the ground. And guys, if you're in that season, enjoy the blessings of corporate gathering. Enjoy the blessings of your Ignite group, of the worship, of the teaching, of the all the extra stuff we're doing. We're doing a coffee time after this, connecting via Zoom. Enjoy all of that available to you. But consider, just as this verse says, how we may spur one another on. You need what the church gives and you also give what the church needs. Here's a question. Do you belong to this church or does this church belong to you? What's your mindset? Are you an attender or are you an owner? Is this a a joint partnership ownership thing? Of course, Christ is the head. We see that in Ephesians 4 and in many other places. But does, does um, does does your approach to the church look like I attend or I'm an owner? Do I belong to this church or does this church belong to me? And through that, we belong to one another you're not supposed to go to church you're supposed to be the church and last point and then we're going to wrap up number four you were designed for meaningful connection with others there is a default design in each and every one of you that god has ordained that he has designed you for meaningful connection meaningful connection and the trouble is that a lot of our connectivity is a mile wide and an inch deep Uh, and 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 Ironically, no place better to examine this than Facebook. You can have 5,000 friends and feel like you're not really known by any of them. Um, you know, and we need to, uh, we need to have this um, ability to be able to examine ourselves and actually realize that we are designed for meaningful connection and we need to pursue that. We need to be intentional about that. Think about the way Jesus modeled it. He had the crowds, he had the 72, he had the 12, and then he had the three, right? There's there's the majority of his time that he spends with the 12. And there's some really intense heart level, sweating blood moments that he has with the three. Think about the Mount of Transfiguration. That wasn't all of them that went up. So even in the life of Jesus, we see modeled this need for widespread connection. Absolutely, that's great. But then there's a smaller gathering of those 72 that's, you know, perhaps not as deep, but there's a, there's a level of connection there that's greater. And then we see the 12, like that's the high level of investment. But even within that 12, there's the ones that he shares those really intimate moments with. And guys, we need that model in our lives. Be mindful, thinking about who are your, who are your 72? Who's your big crowd? Who's your 12? You know, your, your close friendship circles. And who are your, your two or three that you, you sweat blood with, that, that they know your hopes, they know your fears? When was the last time you cried? When was the last time you laughed with those people? And we've been on that journey the last few months really God's been uh, prior to all of this bringing us back into that season of really investing intentionally in a in a small group and and this is where Kate uh, and the the pastoral team get a huge shout out with Ignite groups I know we can't gather together physically in this season but guys if you're not in an Ignite group if you're part of our church family you've got to get into an Ignite group you've got to get connected Uh, take this time take this opportunity to be intentional I don't believe we grow in rows I believe we grow in circles when we take that time to intentionally gather together and be real with one another be vulnerable with one another you were designed for meaningful connection and so in a minute we're going to transfer back to kiki and she's just going to lead us in a time of prayer uh, just to do some ministry into this but guys don't treat this like a facebook moment don't have it on in the background engage there's an opportunity here for you to meet with the living god for him to stir your heart for him to stir you again into that fresh expectation that you have something to bring, that your gift is meaningful, even in this season, that there's intentionality required, but there's amazing blessing open to us when we gather together corporately. So what does that look like? That looks like intentional choices. There's going to be a link in the comments here of all of the events we have going on. I'd encourage you, take a look on Church Suite, take a look on the church website calendar, see what's going on, choose to engage, choose to be intentional, choose to put yourself out there but come with the heart of what can I bring? Yes, I'm going to get my needs met, but I I need what the family gives, but I also give what the family needs and I need to be intentional about that. So guys, bless you. Uh, In a second, we're going to hand hand back over to Kiki, but thanks for spending this time with us. 
And so Kiki, back over to you. Thank you, Tom. That was amazing. And I, we want to take this time and opportunity to go through um, a ministry before we go into the Zoom with Tom uh, for coffee and, and laughs and chats. Um, is there, so as Tom was talking about, how do you give? How, what is your mindset? And what do you find? What, and why do you find it hard to connect with people? And as I think it's so important to look back to the things that may have happened to you in the past. There's things that happened to us in the past that have left us wounded and affect us how we act and react at this moment. And I just wanna to touch into the things of what Tom was talking about and um, connectivity, um, even spirit of criticism, of criticizing things that's happening and say that you're left alone, nobody wants to be around you. There's things that our mind gets bombarded sometimes and it's all because of the lie that happened um, when you were young and you believed it. So why don't we take a moment right now and if you can with eyes closed, I just want you guys to take a moment right now and, and ask the Lord to show you a memory of an event that is the root of current problem. Now take a moment right now, just ask him and invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I invite you in my house and that the airways will be clear to hear you, God. So show me any memories of the event. So take your time now, ask the Lord of any event that may have happened that is the root of the current problem for you to feel isolated, for you to feel um, you don't belong, the root for you to feel like there's no point in being part of the family. Ask him. And, I, and what is the first thing that comes into your head? What, well, however irre irrelevant it may seem at first, sometimes a thought, which is first in, seems to have no bearing or anything, least onto something being brought up that has been buried for ages. And it doesn't have to lead anywhere. But, and if it, it, it's just a thought that just has come that you have asked the Lord to show you a memory. And if you're not sensing it, I encourage you to keep asking the Lord to show you of any event or memories that has been buried. And it's important to have God show you the memory and not you looking for a memory that you think it might be. So just ask him. Now, if you have that memory, or if you heard that something that may have happened, now's the time to ask the Lord, Lord, show me where you were in the memory. Ask him to open your spiritual eyes to see where he is in that memory. For some people, you might see Jesus in the room, in that situation, in that memory. Sometimes it's a word that you hear, or it could be both. Sometimes it's a feeling that there is something in the room. The important thing is not to, again, not to try and imagine God doing something, but to wait and see what he's about to do. And if nothing happens, then it's actually, there might be unforgiveness or blockage that may have happened. And what you just simply need to do is ask God for forgiveness. Ask him. You know, we don't modify the memory it is bringing God into the presence in that memory. And that's all you need. It is when 
God speaks, when God comes into your memory, that's when healing begins. Just as the world was created by him speaking, so we are healed in the same way. And as you had that memory, as you had him welcoming into that room, in that room or memory, ask God what he's saying. We, I, we truly believe that God speaks daily. And I encourage you guys, sometimes he speaks by whisper, sometimes he speaks by um, images, sometimes he speaks up the feeling that you may get in your heart. So what is he saying? Or what are you sensing right now in that wound, in that buried wound that you had in the past? For some, you might, you know, God comes in such a mighty way. And I truly believe that our God is alive. Our God is a healer. Our God is a miracle worker. And it's and it, by showing you that, that he was in that room, by bringing you words of comfort, by bringing you words of truth, he's able to break that mindset, to break that things, that, the walls they have built in, in your life. So Father, I want to thank you, Lord, that you speak to your children, that you speak to everybody, I want to thank you, God, that it is through you that we find our freedom. It is through you that you set us free. I want to thank you, Lord, that you're going to bring healing in, in our memories. You're bringing healing every part of us that needs comfort. And I want to thank you that the, that the, the lies and the grip of the enemy is broken as we, as we hear the truth speak into our life, that we are not alone, that we are not meant to be isolated. We were created for fellowship. And I want to thank you, Lord, that we are renewing our minds and know that he is worthy and that we are worthy and that there is time for every one of us. And you said there is enough. There is enough for every one of us. So, Father, I want to thank you, Lord, that you're bringing the truth, the revelation that we are needed, we are wanted, that we are a family, Lord. And, and we and I just encourage you, even from today, to stop any criticism, any judgment that you may have, and actually speak words of thankfulness. You might not believe it, but as you speak the words of the Lord, you will see a breakthrough, because there, there is power in His blood. So I encourage you guys, why don't you start today with Thanksgiving? It is Psalm Sunday. It is what we say, what we, you know, today, I'm, even to, for myself, I'm going to say, Hosanna. Hosanna to him, no matter what it looks like, Hosanna. So I'm going to leave you with a, a quick prayer over you guys. And um, before we moved in, to, uh, we moved to the chat room with Tom and the, the link will show up in the chat. And so just click there and it, it will take you to the Zoom to, to have a fun time with Tom. And um, yeah, so hey, may the Lord face shine upon you and be gracious to you and the Lord and the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always amen hosanna <laughs>